results. When I was at DocuSign, at that point we were up to about 500 million users. And I went over to China on a listening trip because we had uh, entered every major country except for China. And I'd been going there since 1981. I'm a lover of Chinese culture, history, the people, certainly the food. But this time it was different. And what I could see was that General Secretary Xi had amped up, you know, their classic market competition into a new form of techno economic competition. And I actually saw their drone swarm technology. It's the first time I heard about the One Belt, One Road which looked like a military supply chain to me. Everybody was telling me to download 10 cent, you know, every hour. And as I'm getting on the plane, I'm going, you know, all I know is the guys with the best technology win the war. And these guys don't have good intentions. So I said, hey, I wonder if the guys in Washington know about this. So a week later, uh, you know, I, I went out and, and never been involved in government or politics or any kind and always running uh, the company's politically neutral. Um, you know, uh, after I, I, I told him about what I saw, I said, Keith, have you ever thought about serving your country? And I said, you know, that's a dream I never knew I had. I'd be honored. And he said, can you move? I go, I can move anywhere in the world. And they sent me over to the State Department to run U.S. economic diplomacy. And it was uh, just an amazing, amazing experience. I was unanimously confirmed on a Thursday, sworn in on a Friday, went off on Saturday to go to Bahrain, which was the opening session for the Abraham Accords. And it was peace for prosperity. I kind of gave an opening keynote there, then flew off to the G20 in Osaka and then went to uh, Korea, not as far north as the president, but we, we went there on a 36 hour notice. Came back that Sunday night, I go, wow, that was a hell of a week. And then on Monday, I was given the charge to develop and operationalize a global economic security strategy that will drive economic growth, maximize national security, and combat economic aggression. And that's when I recruited 12 folks from Silicon Valley, you know, entrepreneurs, technologists, results-oriented execs. And we combined that with some of the uh, finest uh, career officers, foreign service officers, and civil service into really a magical team. I, I had 3,000 folks working for me uh, around the world in terms of economic diplomacy. All previous U.S. efforts had failed. And, you know, 5G is more than just a, uh, a cell phone. With those speeds, it controls utility grids, power systems, sewage systems. It, it, it controls manufacturing processes, Internet of Things. And then we got the authorities in terms of make a last ditch effort to stop uh, their master plan to control 5G because what they had done is they'd taken the most important company in China, their national champion Huawei, which is also the backbone for their surveillance state and the enabler of genocide. And it looked like they were gonna just run the table. They had just announced 91 uh, 5G contracts around the world. And that's when we got the authorities to do that. And that's when we created uh, the Clean Network Alliance of Democracies. Uh, and we did that by deploying the trust principle. And you know, what was interesting for us, is, so think about these businessmen coming in and, and up to this point, you know, what was going on is the uh, previous government officials were going around the world, banging on the table uh, and other countries saying, don't buy Huawei. And we said, hey, you know, nobody likes to be told what to do. So why don't we treat these countries and these telcos like customers? Because customers are always right and develop a real value proposition. We really need to do that if we expect them to partner with us. And that was a tremendously successful strategy. And, and it all revolved around trust because in my first uh, 60 bilaterals with my foreign counterparts, like economic ministers, finance ministers, foreign ministers. You know, I'd ask them, hey, how's, how's your relationship with China? And they would go, well, they're a really important trading partner. And then they look both ways, like somebody was in the room and they lean and they go, but we don't trust them.